Okay, so the way we start is with a D in the contrabass. And the way we now end is with the G in the contrabass. So that's a nice bookends. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 63, Music Build. In today's episode, we re-entered by mentioning that we're preparing for a Music Build event. A Music Build is part of multidimensional composing, composing in objects. Here is an example of some Music Builds. You may remember in one of our music animations that we have a, vibe, um, a shimmering red bar. This one, as a matter of fact. So on the left-hand side, you see you have a red frame, and then we have orange tumbling notes. And in a different animation, we have uh, orange tumbling notes. So that corresponds... And the, the point of all this, the idea is we've been wondering about using 3D objects to respond to music. And we did get that to happen in our 2D program by exporting 3D from the 3D platform, which is, which is this thing here. This is a 3D platform. How, do it, how come it's 3D? It's because you can look all around. That's what it means to be 3D. And then we look at the tumbling cubes, and you know, they're all over the place. But we'd really like these cubes to be rotating and moving in the frame, just like they did on the right-hand side in our animation. Not this animation, but the one just before this. So, so that's what's been on our mind. It's been on our mind, actually, as part of the beginning of the series. So uh, we've also added sounds to 3D objects that play when the object is touched. It would be nice to have 3D objects that respond and we don't know how to do this, but we have ideas. So we'll show you that. Our ideas have been to just, at least in a static fixed form, build stuff. This is a waveform. We call it the mic, uh, what do we call that? Mic, animated mic bar. So we know that over here, when we're using the microphone to make this thing shimmer like this then it goes -da 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 -da, like that right there it just it goes just like that so so nevertheless it's not moving we would like it if those those bars would like expand and contract expand and contract then we came up with this thing which is uh, if this is a kind of a two-dimensional frame what would it be like in 3d to have a three-dimensional frame so we made this so that it looks like it's black on the outside, and if you walk inside of it, it's totally black like you're really... How do I do that? When you're inside it, it looks like you're in the black, okay? But if you look outside, you can still see the person inside. So the idea here is to have a, a holodeck stage where people on the outside can see you on the inside, but when you're in the inside, all you can see, I'm actually moving my mouse, but I can't. Might have to be a little bit bigger. But see, if I turn around, from my point of view, all I see is black. Turning around, turning around, turning around. Whoops, I just moved. I, that's because I forgot I was in mouse look. But if I, if I turn my... Confusing, isn't it? <laughs> Nevertheless, that's another one of our ideas. And then finally, our kind of our final composition is this thing, which we call Music Conduit, which may remind you of something over here, which is dun, 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 our energy chart that we worked on in the last stream. And as you well recall, the energy chart comes from going through our composition section by section, bar number by bar number, you know, bar nine is hook forgive over here, forgive. And then sure enough in the actual bar nine. So we went ahead and kind of made a 3D interpretation of our energy chart, which we think is kind of cool. We think it's kind of cool. 
So more on music build later. So that was music build. And then in addition to music build, we continued working with Buddha's Dilemma. We tuned our ending. Uh, we wanted, we wanted just a little, we wanted, originally it dropped from here to here and we just felt like we wanted a dot in there to make the chart look right. So this is very much a case of where looking at the chart makes us go back to the score and do something. And what we did was we basically added a two bar um, extension called part 17, which is at the moment just the cello highlighting the G note. Because you, when you hear how this ends, da -da 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 -da, you just want to hear that G. So um, we did all that. So what we're going to do to kind of bring us home again, we'll just play, we'll play the whole piece. And now you can watch the score, and um, and we'll just we'll just we'll just listen. So let's get this into the correct point of view. See the whole thing. And here we go. So that concludes today's stream. We're starting to really like this piece and the changing in dynamic and tempo really seem to make it. And, and we attribute that to very much being able to look at it as a, as a visual energy chart, as well as a listening to it orally. And, um, and even also when we play this in the last stream, just watching, watching the red, bar here because you can tell that you can see see how that shimmers with the with the with the triplets and it shows the echoing effect at the end so it's giving us visual cues that cue our um, aural listening and and vice versa just like we wanted a stronger ending we, we wanted to hear that g at the end and we weren't hearing it without kicking in something 
So our ideas for next time are to continue working with Buddha's Dilemma and uh, look at adding some more contrabass and a little more of those echo effects. We really like them and possibly a polyphon. So tune in next time to see what happens. We'd like to acknowledge Miss Cleo for stopping by. Miss Cleo is our inspiration. And uh, do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming. <laughs>